giving you some interesting information about his life. First, who knows how do you say a world in the holy language? Olam. Why the Olam called Olam? Rami, it's a question for you. Why Olam called Olam? Oh, oh beautiful. Because Olam, it comes from the word Ne'elam, disappeared, missing, mystery. You don't really know what's going on. Once a person is born to this life, by looking at what's going on in the world, everything looks like a mystery. Rich, poor, sick, healthy. It's all kinds of things going around. Single, married, divorced, happily married, not happily married. Happily married, not that many anymore. But there are some. He's wondering, what's going on here? What's going on? One person black, one white, one short, one tall, one... So many things around. So right away, he has millions of questions. Who needs all these animals? What do we need these butterflies? What do we need those bugs? All these insects? All, so many things in the world that it seems to you that who needs this? David Amelech was asking questions like this. But the world, it's too complicated to understand. No matter how much you're going to learn by yourself about the world, even trillions of years, perhaps you won't understand 1% of the brilliance of the creation. Not only that, when you come to learn the creation of the world in Genesis, right there in the beginning of Bereshit, you come to learn about the creation of the world, comes Chazal, and also Ramban, and many other great ones were speaking about it, that it's not so recommended to dig so much in the story of the creation. Why? The more you try to understand, the more confused you're going to be. It's such a complicated thing, the creation of the world, that people may, may think that they are able to understand. The Gemara in Masechet Chagiga, Perek Bet, in the second chapter, the Gemara says like this, there are four things that a person, if he's digging into it, it would be better off for him not to be created. One, what was here before the world was created. So a person always thinking, before Hashem created us, before He created the world, what was really He, what was in space? What, the, what was Hashem doing? When did Hashem start it? All these questions that everybody wondering, how is it possible? If a person is thinking about those questions, it would be better off not to be created, not to come to this world. That's how bad, which means it's very not recommended. Second, what would be after this world, after this world will be destroyed, after all the prophecy will be over, the resurrection of the dead, the Mashiach, this, once Hashem will finish the material world, what's going to be after? It's very difficult to know if a person starting to understand and try to understand that, it will drive him crazy. He won't be able to. We had a seminar about two weeks ago, and one person asked a similar question to this. And... Uh, and the speaker, Rabbi Neugershel, he answered him like this. He told him, look, just the fact that there are certain things in this life about the entire creation, what was here before and after, and the ways of God, that we don't understand, it's a very good sign. Why? Because Hashem programmed program and created us in a way that we will be limited up to a certain line. Up to here you can achieve with, with your efforts and learning and brilliance. The more you're going to learn, there's a limit to how much you can reach. If you're going to try to go beyond that line, you're going to only damage yourself. Why? Because you are, your computer is not capable of having this information in. It's not going to, a computer will not understand it. It's like putting a different language in a computer. The computer doesn't know what to do. So the fact that we don't understand God makes him what he is, so perfect and so great. If everything about God we would understand, that means God and us are equal, God forbid. You understand the answer? And that's basically an answer to almost every question that people have that we cannot understand. What was here before? Why Hashem does this way? Why the sky is blue? Why the earth is brown? Why he made that animal like this? <laughs> There's so many questions that there's no end to this question. I can sit here from now until the end of my life and shoot one question after the other, non-stop, and the answer will be 
always one answer. Why? This is, the, this is the way God wanted it. No other answer. Why is this? Because Hashem wanted it like this. Can you give me another explanation? No. Why? I don't know. Why you don't know? Because Hashem didn't want me to know. Why Hashem didn't want you to know? Because He programmed me with my skills based on my test in life. The Ramchal writes, the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, one of the greatest Kabbalists in history, came to this world for a short visit, 38 years, wrote so many great Kabbalah books, and disappeared. He was like, a, he looked like a broom. That's how skinny he was, you know, very skinny, from Padova in Italy, very, very, very skinny, hardly had a beard, because, you know, the, the Italianos, some of them, like Mexicans and Italians, they don't have really full beard. So he had very little beard. Age 18, he reached such a level, such spiritual level, that angels will come to him and speak to him. He had a Magid. You know what a Magid? There are a few people in history that had an angel, a personal angel, coming to speak to them almost every day. Speaking to them, tell them. For instance, one of them was the writer of the Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo. For years, when he was still overseas, and then when, even when he came to Israel, there was an angel, the Magid, speaking to him. He wrote a book, all the conversation that he had with him. It's called Magid Mesharim. One time, he got up at 7 in the morning. One time, so the Magid didn't come to him for a few days, disappeared. Then he came back, he said, Why, where were you for a few days? I, I started to get worried. He said, you know why I didn't want to come? Because I'm very upset at you. Why? Why did you wake up at 7 in the morning? You're not embarrassed of yourself? <laughs> Imagine if the Magid would come to one of us today, 7 in the morning. So he was always waking up so early. One time, by mistake, instead of waking up at 5, he woke up, let's say, at 7. So for him, it was the end of the world already. To his level, of course. To his level, don't get panic. To his level, the, the, the angel disappeared. The Gaon Nivilna had angels. The Gaon Nivilna, and, and one of them is the Ramchal. So the Ramchal, he writes, everything that is necessary for a human being to know for his benefits in this life, Hashem program him that he will, he will be able to reach. Some of the things you can reach easily, some of the things with efforts of many, many years. But everything you need for your benefits to, to, to achieve great marks in this test, in this life, you are able to reach. Everything that is not necessary, necessary for you to know, for your, for your test, which means whether you know it or you don't know it, it will not change the results of your test whatsoever, nothing. Hashem did not make you capable of understanding. Yes.